Hello everybody, today I'm going to explain how to solve the problem G, A slash B matrix from the code for Cisron 644 division 3. In this task we are given 4 positive integers and we need to find the matrix of size n times m such that each row of the matrix contains exactly A once, each column of the matrix contains exactly B once and all the other elements are zero. In this statement we are given an example for which we have a solution. And as you can see here, the ones are quite evenly distributed. So this gives us an idea about a pattern to follow in order to solve constructive problems. If you have watched some of my other videos related to constructive problems, you will have already known that patterns are quite important when it comes to solving constructive problems. So let's begin with some ideas. Firstly, if we have a pair, N, M, A, B, or mark like a tuple, we need to respect the following condition. N times A should be equal to M times B. Otherwise, we must print minus 1, because as you can see, if we are going to add 1 somewhere in the matrix, we are going to increment both the number of 1s in the rows and both the number of 1s in the columns, so this equality must always hold. Now, let me explain my approach in order to solve this problem. So I have uh, created an array of size m and in each position from 1 to m I have started with b. For the given example 3, 6, 2, 1, this will look like this. So we have an array of 6 integers and each integer is going to be equal to 1. And now let me present the idea of my algorithm. For each line, we are going to choose A of the biggest elements from the array and drop one from them. This will always work since greedy is a, a quite a nice idea for this task. And uh, we ensure that we will never run out of lines to complete or columns. So let me begin with line one. We are going to choose two of the biggest elements and drop one. In this case, I'm going to choose columns 1 and 2 and add 1. For the other columns, I'm going to add 0. Thus, I'm going to drop 1 from these positions and make them 0. Similarly, we are going to choose columns 3 and 4 for the second line and columns 5 and 6 for the third line. And everywhere else, we are going to have 0. That's cool, right? Yeah. This solution will give us accepted. But before explaining my implementation, I want to explain you why some other approaches for completing the matrix don't work. Let's say our input looks like this. Six lines, four columns, two ones on each line, and three Bs on the columns, on each column. And we are going to use some other approach. Also, we are going to need an array of frequencies to tell us the number of ones we are left with, just like in the correct solution. So we have four columns and we should have three, 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 three. And now let's try to complete the matrix, beginning from the first uh, line. So we are going to take each two values at random. We can do it like this, one, 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 one. And then one, 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 one and everywhere else is full with zeros. In this case, this worked because the input was given in such a way that every solution works. But there are inputs for which this approach doesn't work anymore. And we can end up in such a situation such that we are left with less than A columns with something left. And this could give us a wrong answer. Since I have proved that for each input which satisfies the property I mentioned before, namely n times a is equal to m times b, the answer exists. So we should never use approaches which can't be proved. Because as I said, most of the constructive problems involve patterns which can be proved either greedily or by brute force. Now without further introductions, let me introduce you to my solution. As you can see, I have managed to get accepted during the first hour of the contest. 
while also solving the problems from A to feed before. The idea of this problem, as I said, is the following. Firstly, we are going to check the property I mentioned earlier, namely if the products are equal. Otherwise, we can just print no. Otherwise, we are going to fix the value of the frequencies to B. This line wasn't necessary, but since I got several wrong answers before finding the idea, I just edited it for safety. Now, for each uh, line, I have created another array which tells me the position of the column. This is very important because now we can just sort the array using a simple comparison criteria, which is that the frequency at the position A should always be bigger than frequency at the position B if A is before B in the, that array. Now we can just uh, assign one for each of the values among the first X values and assign zero for all the other values while also dropping the frequencies. Now this sequence wasn't necessary because as I said, we are always going to end up with an answer. But as I said, I got some wrong answers and I forgot to delete some lines. Now, if we couldn't find uh, an array, this also doesn't happen. We can just pr print no. But if your algorithm is wrong and it doesn't find an array, it should give wrong answer because the answer always exists. Now, what we are left with is printing yes and printing the array, the matrix. If you liked watching this video, please like the video, subscribe to the channel and press the bell button in order to be the first one to get notifications about the new video. Also, you should join the Discord server, the link in, this, in the description, where I host competitive programming events such as virtual contests and other nice events. Until the next time, stay safe, stay healthy, good luck and goodbye.